I'm going to walk through this very step by step. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to take this Google document. I'm going to go ahead and make a copy of this document. Once you have your document created, I'm going to take out the copy of. Then I'm going to go to Google Classroom. And it might take a minute to load because I have so many different classrooms. Another thing you can do while we're waiting is if you didn't have a Google Classroom set up, you could type or you don't have as many students to send this out to. You could type their students' names um, in here and just put them all in a folder. That's what we really need to do. And so with Classroom, I'm going to go here to my Fred Fake Classroom, go to Classwork page, and I'm going to create a new assignment. And I'm going to call this You Do You Math 2. So I do not forget that I changed the name. I'm going to add a Google document that I just made a copy of. So this document is going to go into Classroom. And there it is. I'm going to hit Insert. And I want it to make a copy for each student in this class. I'm going to add it to my topic. And you can do whatever else you wanted. This is going to be ungraded. Okay. This is the reflection. I'm going to assign it. You can also add um, your Google form into your classroom. So here's like the final product, um, but I'm just walking you through the step by step. But by then you should know the final product. Um, this could be two separate different posts. So the Google form is how they will fill it out. And then their responses, um, this is what the end result will look like. So every time they add a response, it's going to get added to this Google document. So that's the end goal. Okay. Once you have ah, your, let me go back actually to the classroom. Once you've got your assignment all ready to go, you are then going to open up you're going to view the assess, uh, assignment and click this little folder. Okay. This is the folder that all of your students' responses are going to go in. And this is the folder that we're going to need to get this to work. I'm going to go back here into um, the Google site. And I'm going to make a copy of the Google form now. Okay. I'm going to make a copy of it. And all you have to do is I'm going to keep this, I'm going to write two at the end so I can remember that this is test two. And I want this example to collect student email addresses. Um, so I'm going to turn on the Pickerington because I don't want them to type it in. And then I'm going to delete Kurt's name. And I'm going to just double check, make any corrections to the form that you want to do. Make sure you keep this name spot though. Okay, once you go here, you're going to go in to Docapender. If you don't have Docapender, you're going to need to add it. And I'll add a link to it. Um, there's directions and there's a link in this direction sheet. Okay, so I already have a folder. So I'm gonna pick from Drive. That folder was created by Google Classroom. Remember, it's the You Do You Math 2. Okay, it should pop up first thing if you're doing this um, right away and you're following each step. Next. I want it to refresh the list. And then once it does, I want it to pick up the names. Okay, you could include all of the above if for example, you were kind of doing this. Um, but since the students are doing it for the you do you, I am not going to push that out. Okay, I'm going to save and that's going to populate the selected question and Kurt's name is going to pop up right here on question one. If I had more students in the class, their names would be option two, option three, and so on. Okay, I'm gonna hit next. And this is where I have to decide what do I want to go on this Google Doc. So you can remember that in Kurt's example, we had a very easy to read um, doc and it had a table. Okay, so I'm gonna do timestamp, I'm gonna do name, iReady domain, 
I want all of these different pieces. I don't actually need their name because every single student is going to get their own document and their name is up here for me to reference. Okay. This is where you can decide if you want a separate bulleted list of the responses um, or do you want a vertical table or do you want a horizontal table? So the horizontal table was Kurt's example. This one right here, let me see if I can find an example of one that I've done. So this was Kurt's example, it's the table. So again, there's the table. You can see how clean and easy it is to read and the students kind of can see this is very nice for collecting data. Okay, um, maybe mine's in classes. This one is the second option um, where it's the separate vertical tables. So they create a table, but they're not all in one, okay? There's the all-in-one, these ones are not. So this one I was playing with. I'm gonna show you, just for this example, the bulleted list, just so you can see it. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and enable it. Once I have it enabled, you will send the link to your students. So I'm gonna go here, copy this link, and then I'm gonna go into my fake Google Classroom and I'm gonna update the instructions. So I'm gonna edit, and I want them to have a, um, oops, not file, a link to this Google Sheet. And then I'm gonna save it. Okay, now that that's done, let's go ahead and see what this example is gonna look like. So I'm gonna be Kurt, I'm gonna fill out his responses, I'm gonna type test, and then this has to be a number just so the kids can see, and then I'm gonna say I use tense, submit. Okay, let me do another example, just so I can show you how two different examples will look. And so now when Kurt goes back into classroom, he can go into his student work and then he can pull it up. I can pull it up too as a teacher and I can see his bulleted list. So this is the another option. So you got the bulleted list, You've got the separate tables, or you can do all in one table, whatever method you prefer. The font changed because of the font that I had on this um, sheet. It was um, already picked out, so that's why the font's already there. Again, could be super helpful for observations, taking notes, working with students, and it's not too hard to set up now that you have all of these different templates um, that are in that Google site. Now as the teacher, I don't want to have to open up all of those Google documents. So what I can do is I can use this Google Sheet that Google Forms creates, and I can quickly filter, I can quickly look at the different things that I might need to focus on. I could even set up conditional formatting to help me understand where Kirk or my other students need help. Again, a great way to track data Students can share their Google document with their parents if they needed to or for parent-teacher conferences, and you're able to conference with students and pull them up and look over their data or their responses quickly to decide what next steps you need to take as a teacher. All right, if you need any help, please let me know.